Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I wanna talk about ornamental grasses. And I haven't really touched a whole lot on grasses. And the reason for that, I think, is just because I haven't got around to planting a whole lot of them here in our new garden. I had quite a number of them in our old garden, but by the time we started making videos, I had already, like my garden was full and it was kinda of already set. We didn't do a whole lot of in-ground planting type videos in that space. Uh, and I just have started adding a few grasses over the past couple of years. So I'm gonna share 10 varieties of grasses that I have personally grown that I really, really like and I think they have performed really well for me. Um, before I get into my list, a few of the reasons why I like to have them is one, they provide really amazing winter structure. And I know that's usually like the, I don't know, maybe the last thing you would think of when you look at a plant. Right now it's kind of the first thing I'm thinking of because our landscape is still looking pretty stark, but my ornamental grasses that I do have out there are still beautiful. Even though they're like a wheat color, that's what I like to call them, they're dead. They're a wheat colored you know, foliage right now. They're still a beautiful upright texture that looks gorgeous with frost on them. Um, I like that they provide visual uh, a visual break in our landscape. So a lot of the other things that we tend to plant have broader leaves shrubs and perennials and things with just bigger leaves. Um, and so you have this beautiful grassy texture with kind of more of a vase structure. It's just a little bit different providing that contrast in texture that I think is really needed. They also move beautifully. So when you have a breeze, you know, they sway really nicely and they provide an ease for your eye and they just, I, they make me feel peaceful. I just think that there's so, there's so many great ones out there um, and I'm not gonna even be able to cover them all in this one video because the video would be really, really long. Um, but the very first one I wanna talk about today is a fairly new one out. It's called totem pole. It's a type of panicum that grows about six feet tall and almost three feet wide. And I planted my very first one in the garden last spring and it did get close to six feet wide. It's not as, you know, it hasn't clumped out yet but it's a very strictly upright kind of stiff structure. And it's just, it's, it provides some drama, I think, because of the way it's structured. And I think adding to that upright structure are the thicker leaves. So its leaves are a little bit wider and they're a really beautiful blue color. And I love blue grasses, I love them. There are some blue grasses that I stay away from, like blue dune. If you have ever planted that grass, you know what I mean, but I planted that in my last garden and it spread everywhere and it was popping up in my lawn grass everywhere and it was a little bit of a nightmare, but this one does not do that. It just clumps out and stays kind of right where you want it to be. Um, it's very tolerant of a bunch of different kinds of soil, so it can take really poor soil, it can take fertile soil. It's adaptable to pH, different pHs. It is a zone four through nine, so it's hardy to negative 30, so that's really, really tough which I always appreciate, and it's resistant to deer. Panicums also do really well in a full sun spot. So if you've got a really bright, sunny, hot area in your garden, the totem pole would do really well. And it also gets those wheat colored flowers on the top, you know, like the seed heads. I don't know you'd necessarily call them flowers, but they're pretty um, because that wheat color kind of contrasts the blue of the foliage like later in the fall. And number two on my list is another panicum called Cheyenne Sky, and it has a completely different look than Totem Pole. Um, they share a lot of similar qualities, like they're both a zone four through nine. They can both take all of the bad soils. They can take clay or sand. They're drought tolerant, heat tolerant, all of those things, full sun loving. Um, but this one only grows about 36 inches tall and a foot and a half wide. And the leaves are a little bit thinner, but the cool thing about this one is that the leaves are blue but are tinged in red and it adds just such a beautiful color. I have one underneath a weeping willow tree kind of near a Jubilee Celebration Rose and my Hebe statue and it just adds the beautiful texture right there and the flowers on this one are a little bit looser or the, the seed heads are a little bit looser than the ones on Totem Pole. And those seed heads I should mention when they come out they're like a purple color. So you get a really beautiful array of colors and because this one stays quite a bit smaller it's really good for containers and it's a zone four I think I mentioned so it's a really good candidate for a perennial grass to winter over in a container especially for those of you who live in a zone six or above um, you always usually want to put when you're wanting to winter over things in containers you want to choose things rated two zones colder than your current growing zone so for me you know being in a zone five I think they're 
wanting to call us a zone six now, it would probably do really well wintering over in containers for me. Number three is a Penicetum called Desert Plains. And you guys, this is such a beautiful grass and I used it in several different locations and applications in my own landscape. When we think Penicetum, typically I, th I think my brain goes to annual Penicetums like Penicetum rubrum, which is the purple fountain grass or you know Skyrocket or vert Vertigo. And I always think those are ones I plant in containers and then, you know, they are annual so they don't make it through a winter. But the Desert Plains is a zone five through nine, so hardy to negative 20. Um, the first time I ever used this grass was in the four containers in front of our barn. And when I got them, they were massive already. So they were this beautiful centerpiece. They grow three to four feet tall and wide. And I wanna say that they were already at least that, that tall. Um, the clump at the bottom definitely wasn't three feet wide at the time, but they just were this beautiful upright green foliage to start with. And in the fall, it turns kind of like orange red. I mean, it's just a beautiful show. And then the seed heads or the flowers on the top are really big and they're really thick. They're like a bottle brush and they're, they're kind of a purplish color that ages to tan. I also used two of these in our vegetable garden pots. So I have those concrete containers that have the basket weave and I used them well, actually year before last, I had them in there for fall and then I wintered them over and they came back beautifully. I mean, they're gorgeous. And then I um, surrounded them with diamond frost euphorbia, super bells, white. I think that those are the only two things I put in there and it was phenomenal. It was the most beautiful thing. Those grasses just filled in and did beautifully. Of course, the annuals looked really good. They were in a full sun location and this grass does like good drainage. So I think being in a container, it made it very happy. And then I have them out in a couple areas, just randomly out in my landscape. I'm not even sure I've showed you guys in, in video yet. And maybe I'll point them out in a garden tour this year, but beautiful, deer resistant, full sun loving, and they are also pretty good in lots of different types of soil. So long as it drains well. And I should mention before I get any further that just leaving the leaves through the winter is perfectly fine on most all the grasses I'm gonna talk about, except I think maybe the last one, because most all of these will hold their shape. I mean, of course, unless you get tons and tons of snow and it just lays them flat and then that's not anything you can really control but most of them will stand up really nicely through a normal winter the last grass i'm going to talk about gets massive so it wants to flop over a little bit easier when it gets um, more moisture more rain and things like that um, but anyway the rest of these grasses just leave the leaves the foliage up through the winter enjoy it uh, enjoy the beauty you know it's also habitat for wildlife which is awesome and then in late winter early spring you can go back and cut them down before the new growth emerges and then you get a fresh grass every year number four is evergold carex which is actually an evergreen type of grass that stays a lot smaller it's easier to kind of pop in smaller areas of your landscape and it's more tolerant of shade i have a bunch of um, carex planted right behind our chicken run area where it gets a lot of kind of filtered sunshine and they do really well back there. So um, these grow about eight to 18 inches tall and about 12 to maybe 18 inches wide. So just this nice mound of foliage. They are a cool season grass, which means they put on most of their growth in the early spring or in the spring months. And then once temperatures go above 75 and stay there, it kind of just holds. It stays in this holding pattern and they typically look pretty good throughout the summer months, especially in the really hot climates if you give them a little reprieve from the afternoon sun. Uh, and they'll just stay that size and then in the fall when it cools off, they may put on a little bit more growth. But they're just a really nice, I like smaller grasses like that because I want grass texture all over the place, but I don't always have a big location for you know huge grasses. So these are a zone five through 10. So very winter hardy. I actually use these in um, containers all the time. And even though they're not rated, you know, a couple zones colder than my current growing zone, they do really well for me typically. Typically they come back. So I've had really good luck with them. The best time to cut back grasses that are cool, like termed cool season grasses is in the really, really early spring before they start putting on new growth. And oftentimes I don't have to cut them all the way back. I just cut anything that looks tattered or damaged and I leave everything else that looks really good. And they will tolerate some what of a dry shaded area, but they do prefer a more fertile soil that's a little bit more moist. Number five are actually shade loving grasses and they're called Hakanakloa. And I kind of want to talk about two varieties because they are fairly similar. They're both beautiful. So the first one's Areola. It's a variegated type and it's green and yellow and absolutely gorgeous. They have these arched stems and it's they create this really thick kind of dense soft mound of grass in a shadier spot. And because they have that yellow variegation, they really shine. 
but they'll want to grow about 12 to 18 inches tall and wide and they definitely like the ones that I have seen and I have grown definitely get on the 18 inch side of things they spread by rhizomes um, kind of shallowly underneath the soil but they're not invasive for me they've never like wanted to take over an area and honestly I kind of like that's one that if it did spread I wouldn't mind so much because it's just absolutely beautiful especially when you pair them with some hookra like red hookra and some um, big hostas I mean that trio right there and I'm kind of going for that in one area everything's pretty small still uh, at the moment but I've got some um, all gold Hakana Chloe, which I'm going to talk about. Well, I could talk about it right now. It stays a little bit shorter, but grows wider. So 9 to 14 inches tall, 18 to 24 inches wide. And I've got that lining a sidewalk with Mahogany Monster Hookeras right behind it. Is it Hookerella? Hookera, Hookerella, one of the two. Beautiful, huge red leaves. And then right behind that, I've got Empress Wu Hostas. So I've got these three gorgeous plants with wildly different colors and textures, and it's just absolutely beautiful. They are a zone five through nine, and they typically, like they do want a shady spot, especially if you live in a spot that's got really hot, dry summers like we do. They can't really take much sun at all in the afternoon. They tend to burn. So if they do receive sun, morning is the best. And they do well in both landscapes and in containers. Um, if you do cut them back, well, I would leave them. I would leave them through the winter, cut them back in early spring. But definitely cover them. I mean, that's always a good idea with this grass. If you cover them with like a pine bough or if you mulch them up and even if you just leave the tops of the grasses, they'll kind of create their own mulch over the crown of the plant. And I find that that does help the plants um, a little bit better, like thrive a little bit better from year to year. And they do like a soil that's fairly fertile, fairly moist. We have a drip system running by ours, so they get very consistent water and then they do really well. Number six is an incredibly popular grass in my area. I think in most areas because it's been on bestseller lists for a long time. It's called Calamagratus Carl Forrester. And I see it everywhere. I see it in commercial landscapes, in home landscapes, in mass, like planted in huge numbers, and then also planted alone by itself in a landscape and in containers. I just see it all over the place. And it's this grass that grows about four to six feet tall and a couple feet wide, and it is a cool season grass. So it puts on most of its growth, you know, before it gets 75, and then it just holds, and it just keeps this really tidy appearance throughout the entire season. And when the seed heads come out, they're kind of like a reddish purple, and then they fade to a tan, and the leaves are just a really nice medium green, but they're just incredibly low maintenance like incredibly, they don't spread anywhere. They just stay where you put them and they give a lot back really. You do want to put the Carl Forrester in a spot that gets quite a bit of sun. It will tolerate a little bit of shade, but six to eight plus hours of sun, it performs the very best. They are a zone five through 11. For, so for those of you who live in zones that are a little bit warmer, this is a really good grass for you guys. And I know it's gotta be frustrating. We get lots of questions about plants for warmer zones because there's so many, especially that we feature because you know, we have to go with what our zone is, um, but there's so many plants that are zone five through nine, five through eight, four through seven. So for those of you who live in zone nine, 10 and 11, I know it's probably frustrating to find things that you like um, that kind of look like the things that we're planting in our videos, but this grass is a really good one for that. There's also two other Calamagratis while we're on the subject that I love. The first one's El Dorado, and it's got all, almost all the same features, but it's got a yellow variegation, a yellow stripe in the leaf. And then there's Avalanche that has a white stripe. So you've got like three different options right there for a great grass with different color choices. Number seven is another type of penicetum that's incredibly popular in our area, and it's called Carly Rose. This one grows about three, three and a half feet tall and about three feet wide. And it has really deep green, kind of gracefully arching looking leaves. And then the flower, the seed heads that come out are a really beautiful kind of rosy purple red. And they stay that way for a really long time. And to me, they don't have as much of an upright appearance as a lot of the other grasses. They have a very mounded, because of the arching stems, they look like these beautiful rounded, kind of spheres out in the garden. They are resistant to deer, which is amazing. I know for a lot of you guys who deal with that, they're a zone five through nine, uh, and they can tolerate a wide range of soil conditions, and they do like full sun. Number eight is an acarus called Ogon. 
I don't know if I'm saying either one of those names right, but I have it planted actually right behind me in the corner of where the sun porch is, and I have it in between black pearl hookahs. So this grass stays fairly small, and it's actually not even technically a grass, I guess. It's in like a grass-like plant category um, because it's like an evergreen type grass. Um, I don't know much about that, but that's what I understand about it, but it's got beautiful buttery yellow colored leaves. So when you pair it with like the black pearl hookra, it's a beautiful show. It grows about six to 14 inches tall and 10 to 12 inches wide, and it likes a sunny to part sunny. In our area, definitely part sun location so that it doesn't burn in our full afternoon hot sun. This one does tend to burn, um, and it is a zone five through 11, so another grass that can handle warmer zones. But I think the best thing about this grass is that it's a problem solver. If you have a really moist area, a really wet area that you can't figure out what to do with, this grass can handle it. It can take the moist soil and it will still thrive. Number nine is a smaller statured grass called a Discampsia Northern Lights. This is a really unique looking grass, I think, because it's got white variegation. So it's really light green with white variegation. So it looks really bright. It's very, a very unique grass. And then in cooler temperatures, the leaves turn kind of a pink. So you have a light green, white, and pink. It looks like a very pastel kind of look to me. Um, they are a zone four through 10, so incredibly winter hardy. And they're a grass that can tolerate a little bit more shade. In fact, here in our afternoon sun, they do burn. So it's a grass that we can put in a shade bed that really shines really well because of that white variegation. It grows about 12 to 36 inches tall and 12 inches wide. So I think the difference, like there's a, that's a pretty wide range in height. I think in the shadier spots, it tends to stay a little bit on the smaller side. And if you give it just a little bit more sun, if it gets a little morning sun here, it tends to want to grow a little bit taller. My, the cats are just like, they're wanting to be in here. There's cheddar, Russell's already laying behind me. But the Discampsia is also a cool season grass. So it's one that will put its growth on in the spring and then it'll just kind of remain in that holding pattern. Uh, and it's one that you can just cut back in the early, early spring before new growth appears. And the very last grass on my list is my absolute favorite grass that I have ever grown. Uh, it's called Miscanthus Cabaret, and it's a grass that actually the previous owners put in this garden. I was so thankful, so I've got a nice big established one. And I had one in my last garden as well, and I think I do have some good pictures, so we'll throw them up on the screen so you can see what it looks like, and you will know why, instantly, why that is an amazing grass. It grows like six to eight feet tall and at least six feet wide. I think most tags will say it's between three and five feet wide, and maybe they're talking about the base of it, like it'll kind of spread out into a clump that's three to five feet wide, but then with, it, with its big, tall, arching, uh, leaves, it does take up a little bit more space than that. But this one is intensely variegated with white. So it really is a bright spot in the garden. I mean, it's a really, really unique looking. I mean, you can put anything around it that has got, you know, your green and blue and all of that stuff. And this one will just show up so well. Um, I think it can also take being planted near black walnuts, which, um, you know, there are some plants that are more sensitive to that. This one is not. Um, and this is one that I do prefer to cut back in the fall. And the reason for that is, is because this plant is so massive um, it tends to want to flop a little bit when it gets a little bit too heavy for moisture. So even at like heavy rainfall in the fall, not during the season, we will occasionally get a rainstorm in the summer that's pretty, like we get a lot all at once and they still stand up right. But I think later on in the season, they're just a little bit more tired and they can't hold up, especially after the grass is starting to die on the top. Um, so they'll want to flop over. So I just cut them back in the fall. You can mulch up the crown if you want to. Sometimes years I will, most years I don't, and it comes back great for me every single year. It is a zone five through nine, and it does prefer soil on the moist side. And I think that's why mine in my last garden did so well. I had a really heavy soil that like just held on to moisture for a really long time. And so I think that's why it did so well. I've got drip running to the one I currently have, so it's really happy. Now this one does, and I, I think most miscanthus will want to reseed or spread a little bit in the, it does more on the higher end. So if you live, you know, it's so a zone five through nine, if you live in zone eight, nine, I think it will spread worse for you than it will on the lower end of the growing zones is what I understand about it. And I do tend to think that that's correct because it doesn't ever spread for me. 
It stays very much so in its own little clump and I have never ever had to pull a seedling up ever. Um, or any kind of like rhizome that's grown way away or it just stays, it stays where I put it. This one can also handle heat. It can handle humidity. Um, it can handle pollution. It's a really good one for that. It's just an all around for me, to, to me, a really wonderful grass, but you do have to have the space for this one. So that's it, you guys. That's my list of 10 ornamental grasses that I really love, that I've had personal experience growing. There is one that I just remembered I didn't add to the list and it's blue fescue. I love blue fescue. There are lots of different varieties. It adds that blue color in areas where I feel like, I feel like every area needs a little like splash of blue. And this grass, blue fescues are easy to tuck in um, because they stay so small and they provide that wonderful color. So anyway, I guess there's 11 grasses that I really, really like. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Um, we've had lots of you want video about ornamental grasses, and I know we've been really lacking in that area. So we will do more of those as I add more to our landscape. So you can see them um, kind of going in and see the progress of how they're doing and maybe compare it to the progress of yours. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one.